So, so Armin is launching a video product. What is yeah, it? yeah. So it's uh, called Mali V500. Uh, so it's the first in our high def range of uh, video product lines. So this is the first time that ARM does something with video. What does that mean? No. So well, we t we had a video product uh, about three four years ago um, called um, an AVE2. So we've shipped that in over a hundred million devices to date. So that's been very successful. Uh, that was a D1 resolution solution. Uh, so what we're launching now is a high def solution really targeted specifically at mid-range devices. Um, so, and the reason for targeting those mid-range devices, I think we see at the high end, you know, a lot of semicores, they have their own large in-house video development teams. I think we've, what, what we've seen in the mid-range is a need for an IP supplier, a high quality ICP supplier to uh, deliver video in there. So high def encode, decode solutions. And uh, why is it mid-range? Um, Why does it fit there? I think, it, as I say, it fits because at the high end, I think we see in-house solutions from Semicos. They have those solutions today. Uh, so I think in the short term, we certainly see the opportunity and the need, the requirement, is coming in the mid-range. And people want you know, a high-quality IP supplier there. So I think we can fit uh, with that market requirement. So how do you make video IP? How do you make this video engine um, work? So, well, it's, it's a multi-core solution, so it scales uh, single core, will deliver 1080p60, both encode and decode performance. So really high performance, even in our smaller single core variant. That then scales up to an 8 core, where we can achieve, you know, up to 4K, 120 frames a second. Or you can do 1080p, for example, at over 400 frames a second. Whoa, 4K, 120 frames per second, yeah, yeah. record and decode? Record and decode, yeah. That's like awesome in the phone. Yeah, and um, you could put that in phone, tablet, that type of performance. Now that, you might say, what's the use case for that? I think the use case we see for that really high performance is you know, to do f video edit, uh, fast forward, rewind, or even you know, ultra slow motion video capture. So you can do really nice slow motion capture on a smartphone, on a tablet. So is this H.264, is it VP9, so is it H.265? Multi-standard codec, so it's H.264, VP8, uh, MPEG-2, MPEG-4. For HEVC, we kind of, um, that's something we're looking at uh, in the, as a roadmap product. Uh, so you'll see our next generation will have that. Um, you'll see Jakob will probably talk uh, about the GPU and what we're doing with a number of companies uh, to support <coughs> HEVC right now on uh, GPU compute as well as on the ARM CPU. Um, so we can do that on the Cortex-A12, on the Mali T622 and get very efficient implementations of 1080p HEVC uh, right now today. And uh, I guess the VP9, the next uh, uh, mm -hmm. WebM codec, is also as complicated as HEVC? It's, I mean, similarly yeah. complex, yeah. So, and, and again, um, using GPU compute, we think you know we could offer some benefits there for VP9. Still early days, um, but you know I think we have a compute-capable GPU that could deliver the performance even at 1080p for VP9. And so, uh, it's still there's there's a, there's a when you have all this GPU compute, you still want to have a video uh, IP. Yeah, you want to have both. That's the best. I, th I think you do. You'd want to use GPU compute for a whole load of reasons, uh, for computational photography, for image processing, things like that. Um, you know, people are putting down GPUs with compute capability to do that anyway. Um, you know, the reason for doing video hardware for both encode and decode, you can still get more efficiency. So th it's all about power. It's all about power efficiency. And what if uh, th there's, there's all these different levels of complexity when you encode an H.264 video? Mm -hmm. If you say 1080p, one core, does that mean maximum complexity or is it just a standard complexity? Or? So that's, that's baseline main and full profile. We can do 1080p, 60, uh, 100 megabits a second. Full profile means like the, the most compressed possible or it can yeah. be even more compressed if you use more cores somehow? Yeah, so uh, I mean talking about compression, uh, one of the things we are introducing in this uh, video product is something called ARM Frame Buffer Compression or AFBC. Uh, this is a lossless compression technique. 
and it's designed specifically for video but also for graphics, very applicable to graphics textures. And we've been doing some benchmarking recently with real Blu-ray streams, 1080p and 4K Blu-ray streams, and we're getting a 50% memory bandwidth saving by deploying AFBC in both the video and in the display subsystem. So, you know, 50% uh, saving on uh, system bandwidth equates to, you know, if you're running a 4K60 stream on LPDDR2, that equates to about 600 milliwatts of power. That's huge. So, you know, we believe we've got a really strong technology here that, you know, we don't see in the market. And again, it reflects one of the reasons why ARM is right now going into video as well as graphics, uh, as well as CPU. So we're looking at lowering system power year on year by, you know, significant margin. So if you didn't do it, then maybe somebody else wouldn't do it the right way and use too much power and then people blame you. <laughs> I guess I, you could look at it that way. I mean, I think what we can do is just make things easier for our customers. You know, by um, you know, by um, owning those designs, we can actually help our partners deliver compl more complete solutions and deliver things faster to market as well. So, is what you're saying is that the quality of the encode and the bitrate you get for uh, the quality you get for bitrate would be the same as a very expensive Intel encoder machine laptop where you encode the video, or uh, certainly better and um, you know equally as good as you get on the most you know the highest end desktop device, and we're delivering that on a smartphone. So you know, very very good performance, really really power efficient though. Um, and it's, you know, that's what it's about. It's about system level power efficiency. So starting this year, but mo uh, more like next year, people are going to have 4K camcorders in their phones. Uh, the, yeah, I think at the very high end, you probably see 4K encode on uh, mobile handsets. Which is amazing. People are going to record the world in 4K video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it'll probably come sooner than you might think. So yeah, certainly at the high end, I would expect to see 4K video uh, encode next